Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain an action, fantasy, and horror film called Avenged. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Excited to move in with her long distance boyfriend, a 24 year old deaf woman, Zoe, travels across the huge and desolate American Southwest to be with a man she loves. However, Zoe's sister hesitates to let her drive alone, thinking she will find it hard to call for help if she needs it. Still, Zoe insists she'll be okay, so her sister reluctantly lets her go and drive to the house of her boyfriend, Dane. As Zoe heads to Dane's place, she stops to take a picture of a cactus to update her boyfriend. She also notices a dead coyote and immediately continues her journey. Then, Zoe stops by a souvenir stand managed by an elderly native. She is fascinated by the Apache antiquities from the stall and decides to look around. Zoe continues her trip and uses her cell phone to update her boyfriend. Suddenly, she is forced to abruptly stop her car when she almost runs over an injured Indian in the middle of the road. Zoe stares in shock as she sees his companion being run over by the local gang. Despite that, she bravely helps the injured Indian and puts him in her car, but the local gang catches up to her. One of the men, West, kills the injured Indian in Zoe's car, so Zoe runs away. The other guy, Trey, tries shooting Zoe and succeeds in hitting her leg, causing her to fall. Zoe is abducted, tied, and savaged by the members of the local gang. The men take Zoe to a shed and take turns violating her, except for West. West wants to kill her to avoid being reported in case she escapes, but the others disagree with him. Creed then finds Zoe's photo with Dane and gives it to Trey, but Trey just throws it away. Zoe also notices an old woman watching them through a small hole and tries asking for help, but the old lady is too scared to do anything as the men continue defiling her. Meanwhile, Dane is worried because Zoe hasn't been updating him, checking the photos his girlfriend sent him to find out where she is before calling the cops. That night, Trey talks to Zoe about his ancestors who wiped out the Apache tribe inhabiting that area over 200 years ago. Trey boasts that he is the direct descendant of Brigadier General Joseph Rodman West, who killed the war chief. Trey shows her the preserved skull of the Apache war chief being kept in a refrigerator along with several other skulls of Apache warriors. Once they're done with Zoe, the men start playing cards. Trey makes a deal with West that if he wins, he gets to kill Zoe. But if Trey wins, he gets to keep the girl for fun. In the shed, Zoe tries to free herself from the barbed wires used to tie her up, wounding herself in the process. West wins the bet and immediately gets up and finds Zoe about to escape the place. Unfortunately, West catches up to Zoe and repeatedly stabs her, while Trey's brother, Skeeter, sees them from his window. The next day, Dane searches for Zoe. At the same time, an elderly native named Grey Wolf finds Zoe's body and digs her out. He recognizes her as the girl who came to his souvenir stand and brings her to the sacred Apache burial site where he resides. At night, Grey Wolf treats her wounds and attempts to bring her back to life through a ritual. However, during the ceremony, he also brings back the spirit of the Apache war chief Mangus Coloradus, who was killed by Trey's ancestor. The war chief was brought back together with Zoe because of their mutual thirst for revenge. Zoe attacks Grey Wolf, but the man manages to knock her out. Zoe wakes up later and walks down the road, finding herself in town. She also sees a payphone and calls Dane, but her boyfriend does not understand her as she speaks. Worried, Dane tells Zoe to put someone else on so they can tell him where she is. Then, he decides to hang up and call an operator to locate where Zoe made the call. After that, Zoe sees a cop and walks toward him to ask for help, only to realize it's Jed, one of the gang members. Jed does not see her and walks into the bar, but Zoe is startled, and it triggers the spirit of the war chief to possess her body. Zoe goes inside the bar, now possessed by the war chief, and hears Jed talking to the bartender about her. Jed says Zoe's car was found down the road and tells the bartender how pretty she was, unaware that the girl is behind him. Zoe hears all this and repeatedly stabs Jed with a broken beer bottle, mercilessly disemboweling him. The bartender is afraid and tries to shoot her with a shotgun, but Zoe throws a chair at him. Zoe ends up killing the bartender and another civilian in self-defense, before scalping Jed to death. 
Moments later, Dane is able to track Zoe's location. He drives to the bar and sees cops surrounding the place. The sheriff, Holt, who's investigating the incident, tries to stop Dane from entering the bar and looking for his girlfriend. Holt tells Dane that there's no girl there and suggests they meet in the morning, saying he'll see what he can do to find Zoe. Eventually, the gang reaches the bar. Trey checks on the butchered body and confirms to his friends that it was indeed Jed who was killed. Dane then asks them if they saw his girlfriend, Zoe, who called him through the payphone, but they only reply in racial slurs, stating they do not want to help people like him. Dane tries to talk to them again, but Creed replies that they've never seen her, and it's not the best time to talk to them since they have lost someone. Still, Dane insists on talking to them and pisses West off. West tries to stab Dane, but Holt stops him, and threatens them to be locked up for misconduct if they do not back away. West thinks that Dane is bluffing, saying there's no way Zoe had called him, which made Trey a little skeptical. West is sure that he killed and buried Zoe, but Trey wants to see her body if she really is dead. In Holt's car, Dane tells the sheriff that he's sure West and his friends have something to do with Zoe's disappearance. Holt then asks Dane if Zoe's driving a 68 blue GTO, and when Dane says yes, the sheriff informs him that somebody reported it on the side of the highway that morning. Dane also shows Holt the photo that Zoe took on Route 40, so Holt says he'll have his deputy dust the payphone for Prince. In the morning, Zoe wakes up in a barn and steals a hunting bow to hunt and kill the remaining gang members. Meanwhile, the gang goes to where Zoe was buried and discovers her body is gone. The men try to figure out what happened to Zoe, and Trey eventually decides to lay low. Later, the men get rid of all the evidence linking them to Zoe's disappearance and death, while Creed prepares to leave his house. Creed is shocked to see his car tires are punctured by arrows, so he sends Trey a voice message, thinking Zoe is at his place. He then sees a possessed Zoe, who shoots him with an arrow in the thigh that prevents him from walking. Zoe makes Creed suffer by shooting him with more arrows, and when Creed shoots her with a gun, she finally kills him. Trey hears Creed's voice message and immediately goes to his house. After that, in the barn, Zoe removes her ring and soon realizes her body is decomposing. Grey Wolf finds Zoe at his place and explains what has happened to her. Grey Wolf warns her that her flesh will not sustain for long, so she must do whatever she has to do before it's too late. At Creed's house, Trey finds his friend's lifeless body. Trey confronts West for letting Zoe live, but the guy is sure he killed her. They then decide to abduct Dane to lure Zoe out so that they can capture and kill her. The following day, Holt responds to a call in the barn where Zoe first slept. The rancher's dog found a person's scalp, and the rancher also said someone stole his hunting bow. So the sheriff goes into the barn and complains that it smells like a dead coyote. There, he finds Zoe's ring, and his colleague informs him through the radio that Creed was also shot up with arrows. Holt also learns that the prints from the payphone match the fingerprints on the bottle used to kill Jed. Dane cries in the bathroom because he is worried sick about his girlfriend, while a decomposing Zoe listens to him outside his motel room. Zoe then writes on the mirror, begging Dane to forget her. Dane tries to catch up to Zoe, but is immediately caught by Trey's group. Zoe sees this and shoots Cody in the neck with an arrow. The group tries escaping, but Zoe jumps in the back of the truck to stop them from getting away with Dane. Zoe ends up fighting West in the back of the truck, but she stays alive no matter how many times she gets stabbed. So Trey abruptly stops the vehicle to prevent Zoe from killing West. Zoe gets thrown out of the truck, and Trey runs her over in an attempt to kill her. Trey laughs, believing he has killed Zoe, but when he realized she was still alive, their gang drives away, leaving her sobbing in the middle of the road. Afterward, the men tie up Dane and try to figure out how Zoe survived. They think about visiting a witch doctor, and soon, they team up with the bartender's father, Roddy. Roddy is a second lieutenant in the Marines, who's brought his men and guns to help Trey hunt the girl who killed his son. Zoe returns to Grey Wolf's place and fixes her wounds by filling her stomach with sand and taping her injuries with duct tape. Then, the war chief's soul burst out of Zoe's body, giving Zoe his old tomahawk, knife, and necklace. At the same time, Roddy asks Trey why Zoe went on a rampage, so Trey recounts what they did to her while Dane listens. Dane weeps as he learns about what happened to his girlfriend. 
And as Trey continues talking, Holt visits Skeeter and asks him about Zoe. Skeeter confesses to Holt, causing the sheriff to be desperate to know where Trey and his friends are. Meanwhile, Cody tries escaping to get to the hospital to have his wound treated. Cody leaves in Roddy's car, but Zoe appears out of nowhere and kills him by throwing a spear at him. Zoe gets out of the way as the car flips, and when the men see her, West realizes she's being controlled by a spirit. Zoe heads toward the shed that Trey's group fortified, but Trey shoots at her and sends her running away. The men then split up to hunt her down, but Zoe easily kills Roddy and his men. West sees one of Roddy's guys hanging dead from the ceiling, and it isn't long before he finds Zoe too. West manages to shoot Zoe, but the possessed girl throws her tomahawk at him and hits him in the neck. Then, Zoe drags West's body and rips his heart out, telling Trey to walk in hell when she sees him. Trey prepares to shoot Zoe upon hearing her say those words, but Holt arrives outside and orders him to come out. Holt tells Trey to back away, only to be shot by the guy before he drives away. In the shed, Dane sees Zoe's reflection in the mirror, but the girl eventually leaves and walks past Holt. Inside his trailer, Grey Wolf looks at Zoe's missing person poster and calls Dane, telling the man to find him. Trey goes to Grey Wolf's place and threatens him with his gun to find a way to stop the War Chief's vengeful spirit, realizing he's possessing Zoe. As it turns out, Trey's ancestor told the War Chief to walk in hell before he killed him. Grey Wolf says the Great Chief must be laid to rest on that sacred ground leaving Trey laughing since he knows where the War Chief's skull is. During this time, Zoe reaches Trey's house and discovers that Skeeter killed himself. She also sees the old woman who saw her and the men in the shed, who turns out to be Trey and Skeeter's mother. Trey's mother talks to Zoe about her family and how different Skeeter was from the rest of them, and she knows that the War Chief is possessing the girl. The old woman's grandfather did his best to exterminate all the Apache tribes, and when he died, the deed fell to his son. Trey's mother continued what her ancestors started, telling Zoe she's just a casualty of war before Zoe kills her. Moments later, Trey retrieves the skulls of the Apache warriors and buries them on sacred ground. However, the war chief's skull is missing, but Trey soon sees Zoe with it. The two have a final battle, and Trey tries killing Zoe with a chainsaw. Zoe cuts off Trey's hand and stabs him, but as she's about to finish him off, the guy thrusts the chainsaw into her body. Despite that, Zoe decapitates Trey and completes the War Chief's mission to exact revenge. Afterward, Dane reaches Grey Wolf's place and finds a decapitated Trey. He also sees Zoe's upper body trying to bury itself. Zoe tells Dane through sign language that she loves him, and Dane sets her body on fire to end her suffering. Because of that, the souls of Zoe and the War Chief are liberated into the afterlife. In the morning, Grey Wolf buries them properly. Dane asks Grey Wolf if he did the right thing and Grey Wolf responds that Zoe and the War Chief are now gone from their cruel world and exist in a better place. Dane asks again if Grey Wolf believes in all of that, so Grey Wolf tells him that he has seen the gates, but he hasn't been permitted to enter yet. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.